Hello traders, welcome to another trading interview, this time with one of our serious FTMO traders, Dylan from Raleigh in North Carolina. Welcome Dylan. Thanks Peter, thanks for having me, I appreciate the opportunity. And thank you too, we are really happy to have you here today. And guys, for those who are listening to us for the first time, FTMO is a proprietary trading company that actively searches for, for trading talents because we have developed a unique two-step evaluation process that consists of FTMO challenge and verification phase. And once you pass this two-step evaluation process, you will be offered a unique placement in our proprietary trading company when you, where you can remotely manage your own FTMO account. And that is why we have Dylan here. Because Dylan is one of our very serious traders he is with us since I believe October of 2020 so he's like with us more than half a year he had a lot of accounts and right now he is a master of one FTMO account of 100k and with a profit from previous month of more than $8,000 and that is again amazing result in this long term so before we will jump into the strategy Dylan please can you introduce yourself to us please Sure. Uh, Dylan Bowders. I'm from, again, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I love the city that I live in. My wife and I live downtown and, uh, and, and love to travel. Uh, we love to get out and about, walk around downtown, uh, supporting local businesses. And um, okay. uh, during I'm, the... I'm interested about supporting local businesses. I do support local businesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so you know, during the day, I'm, uh, so I'm not a, a full-time trader in the sense that um, I'm, I'm relying on my profits to, to pay for rent and, you know, things of that sort. So, um, during the day I'm, uh, a security IT security consulting, have my own business. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, that's, that's what I, I, a lot of times I'm focusing on, but fortunately that gives me an opportunity throughout the day to check up on trades and, uh, and make sure that hopefully everything is going well. And if it's not, you know, check up on it. And how much time do you spend on trading during the day? Uh, I would say probably two to three hours a day, um, some, some time on the weekends when it comes to preparation, but uh, probably a good two to three hours a day. Cool. And how long did you learn to trade? So uh, because of, of COVID, um, I had an opportunity where uh, I wasn't traveling. I was traveling a lot for work up to, until COVID, and I found that I had some additional time on my hands. And a friend of mine introduced me to a company that had software that you could subscribe to. So it was an expert advisor mm -hmm. and I didn't even know what Forex was. It's kind of embarrassing, but that was, you know, March of, of 2020. And, uh, I am I'm, I'm an engineer at heart and I like to know how things work. So, um, I wasn't the kind of person that jumped into an EA and just trusted that it worked the way that it's supposed to work. And, uh, you know, really dug into the, into the weeds with what, trading was you know, what is a mm. sell trade what is mm. a buy trade what are stop limits what are buy mm. limits um you know uh and and that really got me interested in manual trading mm -hmm. so uh so a, about not quite even a year and a half as far as the length okay. of trading goes and how about the ea uh does it work or because i believe it didn't so maybe the qu right question was uh how Co what was the cost of the EA? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, the subscription cost wasn't much. The the learning cost was pretty high. Uh, 2020 was definitely an expensive um, year of learning for me. And I think as, as everyone knows, and, and maybe you don't if you're watching this, um, it, it, no one has been successful trading Forex in a couple of months and then just got lucky. Um, it, it takes years of practice and I'm far from an expert when it comes to trading Forex, but I think I'm on the right track. So, um, yeah, 2020 was an expensive lesson. I don't use that EA anymore. It was a Martingale based system. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, uh, again, I had enough losses where I decided to move on and mm -hmm. I started to understand what is it that I want in an EA? What is it that, um, is going to give me the right risk, um, tools, risk mitigation tools, um, and be able to go on about my life and not necessarily have to sit in front of the computer all day long watching it and stressing out. <laughs> and and this EA was fully automated? It executed orders for you or? Not exactly. I'm in the United States, so okay. it can't be a system that automatically places trades or that automatically makes decisions for you in that sense. 
So there was a system or there is a system where you have to say, okay, I approve this sequence of trades. Mm -hmm. And then it would go about making the decision on, you know, what's the step and what's the lot size increments and, and all of that. So there wasn't an, an intervention piece to it. And have you been thinking to program your own EA with your active um, strategy? Yeah, I have dabbled with, with that a little bit with some uh, with some friends that I've met through the Forex community um, through the last year and a half and uh, and have played around with one. Um, the intent of the development is to to have something that is accepted by prop firms mm -hmm. and has the right risk mitigation tools and uh, the right equity protection, obviously. Uh, so it's, it's something that's kind of in development, but it's not not something that we were, we're looking to sell or provide subscriptions for us strictly for, for personal use amongst about six of us. Ooh. And how did you find out about FTMO? So um, through the company that I used, uh, that I am still still subscribed to, um, I met a, a trader called Jesse Kammer and uh, and Jesse had been developing his own system called XK. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's really where I, I shifted from uh, what I had learned with the EA and placing some manual trades here and there, a lot of that not necessarily successful, and and moving into really understanding indicators and understanding um, uh, the markets and it, definitely more technical trading, very little fundamentals involved, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's really where I got my got my start. Um, I would say that uh, you know Jesse really has really been an inspiration and in, in seeing what's possible mm -hmm. and and being able to take that and, and adapt that to uh, to kind of my own. Not my own system by any means, uh, but being able to understand where maybe I'm not as comfortable in going into a trade, or maybe I want to reduce my risk for, for whatever reason it may be, but still, still using those same indicators and, and tools. Okay, and do you have also your own account somewhere else? Yeah, yep, yeah. um, and and you know I I'll take some of my FTMO profits and and kind of diversify where those go. Again, I, I'm not using that those funds to uh, to pay the daily bills. So I take that and kind of use it as investment income towards um, my own uh, account for for trading live, um, as well as some some crypto investments and um, and then just paying for some of the some of the monthly fees and dues that come with things like trading view and, and some other some other items. And did you find some difference between uh, when did you trade without a FTMO account and then after when you become a FTMO trader? There's an emotional component to being an FTMO trader. Certainly when you go through and do a, an actual challenge and verification, um, I did start with a trial. Highly recommend starting with a trial because it gives you an idea of how to use the metrics and what's expected and, and what the system is like. It doesn't fully prepare you necessarily, but you know, it's just like running a demo account. If you're jumping straight into Forex with live money, um, you probably won't be in Forex for long. <laughs> so. You know, start with a trial um, and, and give that a chance. So it, it absolutely was was quite a bit different for me emotionally mm -hmm. back in October of last year, going through a challenge and verification. It it made me much more aware. I was more conservative with FTMO money than I was with my own, and really? and it Not really so. helped me. Well, I, I didn't. You know, I, I don't want to lose this opportunity at you know being able to trade a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So. Um, so I, I became, it really evolved me, I think, um, okay. and cool. helped me train to be more emotionally um, uh, stable <laughs> when, when it comes to trading. <laughs> yes, as, as emotionless as possible. That's right. Cool, cool. Great to hear that, that you could somehow grow with us like this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. So it's part, it's part of my, part of the process. Yeah. Cool. So sh can you show me some strategy that you use? Sure. Yeah, I can, uh, I can pull up my um, MT4. So here's uh, MT4 that I have set up um, uh, just for the sake of, of going through uh, some of the indicators and, and how I use uh, the, the, the manual system that I use called XK. Mm -hmm. um, I just pulled up a, I, I went through and, and looked at a few different pairs. Uh, AUD CHF is one that lines up uh, fairly well and I think is a good, uh, a good example to use. So I've just pulled it up on a demo account here. So you solely focus uh, on AUD CHF? No, no, nope. Uh, there, there really aren't any pairs. In fact, even, even in some cases, uh, precious metals and working. Uh, Jesse is working on adapting XK to cryptos as well, but they they trade much differently. So 
um, there's there's a, a different set of indicators that he's working with on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, really, any forex pair, um, even you get into something like USD Czar that pays uh, positive swaps. Um, there's some some ways to leverage that as well. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, you know, the only indicator here is the 200 MA. I happen to be on a, on a one hour chart right now. Um, I, I like to look at one hour charts in general. Uh, and I, and I do mostly swing trade. That's the XK system is mostly swing trades. Mm -hmm. Um, and I usually stick to a one hour chart for the initial view just for consistency, but absolutely look at all different time frames. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do then is I'll jump to, uh, the day chart and, and well, as you can see here, we had quite a bit of movement on the uh, on the Swiss franc mm -hmm. uh, today. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll switch over to to XK, and on on the day chart, what we're looking at here is we have um, the Bollinger bands, we have arrows, uh, we have the 200 uh, or the yeah the 200 MA in this case on the on the day mm -hmm. chart, um, absolute strength histogram, which plays into it. You have RSI and stock indicators that all kind of play into the system. And without giving away a whole lot, basically what we're looking at is either overbought, oversold. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a confirmation that the trend has changed. Mm -hmm. And based on the time frame, that'll let us know whether or not we're looking at a longer or shorter mm -hmm. swing trade. So if I come down into say H4, you see we're well outside the Bollinger Bands. We're, we're getting oversold on RSI, we're oversold on stock. Um, what we would be looking for then is for these the absolute strength histogram to come back mm -hmm. and have a, um, a diversion so that we can confirm that this bearish trend is now switched to a, a, a bullish trend. Mm. And as we come down, we'll see very oversold, very oversold, very way below the Bollinger <laughs> Bands, you know, and just keep coming down. So then would be well once we get this cross, and and maybe we'll see that maybe an M15. You see that we're starting to get across on the absolute strength histogram. Um, for shorter term, this may mean we want to enter into a trade, but I, we typically are looking at, at more of like the the one hour and the four hour. Mm -hmm. um, once we get confirmations there, then we know that we're looking at you know a, a trade that probably will last several days. So the crossing uh, maybe even is a just a signal weeks. for you. Oh? Yep. That's right. It's more of a confirmation. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we want confirmation in several different areas for that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then to enter the trade, as far as where we put things like stop losses, where we put um, target tar or take profits, um, we'll look at shorter time frames to get an entry, mm -hmm. and we'll look at longer time frames to get support and resistance for either the stop loss or those take profits. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that's generally it, without giving away a whole lot of the special sauce. <laughs> okay, okay. So use a lot of indicators. Can you yep. jump back it's to them again and show me them again? Yeah. Because there was a RSI, 200 MA, then cross, Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands, yep. right. Uh, how about uh, when the trade is in the tunnel? It is somehow important to you? Um, it depends. If I'm in the trade mm -hmm. and and it's there, then then I'm then I'm possibly looking at an opportunity either to go ahead and take some profits, maybe a little bit early, mm -hmm. um, maybe move stop loss if if I'm already in profit and I don't want to uh, to risk you know going back into uh, some kind of a retracement mm -hmm. in in the floating loss. Um, otherwise, if I'm not in that trade and and I and let's just take I don't know. Um, Let's just look at Euro USD as an example, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I haven't looked at it yet, so this may not line up for us. But you know, we're so we're a little overbought. We're a little overbought here. It's actually not a bad example of of something to keep an eye on for a potential uh, sell trade. Mm -hmm. But if it's in the middle, then I just move on. I move on to the next pair. Keep looking and you know, and, and try and find one that that's 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 more aligned with with a good entry. And you use this strategy to how many instruments? Uh, I mean, it can be any forex pairs. Okay. Um, it can be uh, oil. Um, it can be uh, precious metals, gold, silver. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are not focused really on any instrument. You just have this indicator set up, and then you will just you know try each instrument for each day, and then you will somehow search for 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 the opportunity. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So can you show me in the client area how much instruments have you traded? Yeah, let me get that pulled up. Cool. So, how do you like the new chart? Uh, the revamp of the website looks mm -hmm. looks great. Um, 
it's taken me a, a little bit just to understand uh, the, uh, the difference between the balance and equity on the chart here uh, and, and some of the differences, but uh, I think that it looks great and uh, the additional info is, is certainly useful. Um, I don't use the metrics extensively. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I'm, I'm very interested in data. It, the data certainly helps understand where you're being successful, where you, where you may, maybe aren't being as successful. Um, but given that it's not part of my system, I don't use it uh, to, to necessarily change how I trade. But it, it certainly is, is good information to have. Um, and do you use so, some statistics there? Uh, yes, yes. I, I, well, some of the statistics I like to see, and, and one of the probably the, the, the biggest used is, you know, and I have my own, my own risk, um, risk tools, uh, uh -huh. position size calculator is something okay. that I use that I, I think is great because it can tell you based on your current open trades, what's uh -huh. your current um, risk outlay. Um, I, I try and keep that to, you know, no more than say four and a half percent of okay. potential loss. So if every single trade I have open um, goes against me, uh, I know that I'm not, I'm not going to hit my, my max daily loss. Okay. Um, as you can see here, I actually, I was kind of surprised to see it that low, but mm -hmm. that's great. I mean, $881 mm -hmm. for max loss across the period. That's um, good. Not, not too bad. <laughs> um, but I also keep about $2,500 in my account so that I have a little more, a little extra cushion on the max loss. And if you go um, back to the, to the chart, uh, I just noticed this, that, uh, you seems that you take some of the profit from previous period and you roll over to runner period. Is that right? Yep. I, I roll about $2,500 from, uh, from the previous period. So I'm never withdrawing, um, uh, the, the full amount. I try and keep uh, $2,500. I did 5,000 initially mm -hmm. and, and found that I, I never, I never was even needing it or touching it. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt like moving down to about $2,500 was probably a, a, a better idea. So that's just part of the, your risk management that you are investing right. in your own FTMO account and you don't want to start from the, you know, no initial balance again. Yeah. I, I've, I've gone through the, um, the challenge and the verification in October and I've had the same account since then. Mm -hmm. And, cool. uh, I, I don't, I don't want to have to, you know, go back through it again just to have an account. So I want to try and do what I can to keep it. Nice. So you don't want another FTM account to have like 200 or 300. You don't want to change. Uh, I, you know, I have other things that I do during the day. Mm -hmm. So going, uh, having, uh, going back through another challenge of verification just isn't high on the, on the list right now. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly something that, um, I'll consider doing, especially if I get, if I get a good EA mm -hmm. that I think is, is going to be successful with FTMO. Um, I don't want to mix my manual trades and my EA trades, mm -hmm. so I would I would uh, you know look to pass another uh, another challenge and go for another account, but I wouldn't combine them because um, the idea would be to to have the diversity. I'm I'm very big on diversity. Cool, great. Um, well, I thanks. don't even like trading symbols with the same currencies at the same time unless mm -hmm. there's uh, uh, unless there's a known um, uh, distance of correlation between the two. Um, and do you remember just roughly how many profit splits you get? Um, I've had a profit split every month since October. Cool. Okay. So, I mean, it, it might not be a whole lot. Uh, and I, again, I'm not paying the bills with it, but wow. um, it's, I've definitely had a, a, pro a positive profit split every month. Wow. Great to hear that. So show me your diversity in the instruments below. Yeah. Um, no, no, it's below. There is a better chart for it. Yep, that's it. Almost there we go. Yep, there is it. So here's here's the chart with the symbols. Um, GBP CAD is one that I've been focusing on a little bit more lately. Uh huh. Um, Why is that? Um, so it, it's it's part partly a strategy with an EA that I'm using outside of FTMO, and uh, it typically uh, it typically does fairly well. It's more of a scalping EA mm -hmm. um, that I'm, I'm I'm I've been working with and. Uh, I'll, I'll play some manual trades, uh, alongside, mm -hmm. um, the EA. I have run the EA on my FTMO account a few times and, it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's done fine. It's worked well. It, it trades during a very specific period of time. So I'm, I'm much less likely to hit a news event. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it also doesn't hold trades for very long. So I'm not too worried about getting into a, a Thursday trade. That's going to, that's going to be a negative and hold over the weekend. Um, now, Again, with the swing account type, which I plan uh -huh. to change to, um, that that 
that consideration changes. So I, I'll have to rethink my strategy around that. And also just the fact that my current um, system with XK that I've been, I've been following Jesse on mm-hmm. um, it's, it's a little awkward to follow a three week swing trade, having to close out on Friday mm-hmm. and then getting in on Monday, potentially if we're already in profit, maybe I don't want to get in and I just mm-hmm. move on to the next one. So I can't really fully, I haven't been able to fully take advantage of that, of the, of the XK swing trade system mm-hmm. with, uh, w- without holding trades over the weekend. So I'm excited to, to really, um, lean into that a bit more. And how long do you hold the trades on the swing account or swing trade? I um, swing trade so yeah, strategy. um, on my live account that, that I trade outside of FTMO, uh, I can have trades open for you know, two, three weeks. I usually don't hold them much longer than that. Um, I know Jesse has had some trades that he keeps open for sometimes a month or more. Um, the thing with that is you end up, uh, obviously your swaps end up going up and, and you have some cost uh, associated with that. But you can also get into a situation where you have a, a good amount of, mm-hmm. of floating profit and then you can lean in more on some other trades. So that's also a good situation to be in and, and looking forward to being able to do that within FTMO as well. And did you came across our new product, FTMO Account Swing, where you can hold trades or, uh-huh? Yep, I, pl- I plan to change to that on my profit split next week. Cool, mm-hmm. cool, great. And now, how about, again, the scalping strategy? Why do you change it? Like, why to have two strategies in one account? Um, well, I, I'm typically not using the scalping and swing strategies in the same account, again, because I don't want to overlay that risk. So if I know... For instance, if my if my outlay on my swing trades is you know four mm-hmm. percent, I'm probably not scalping on that account. Uh, it, 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 well, I'm not scalping on F, on the FTMO account. I'm, I'll I'll do that on on my live account where I have more room for um, for floating loss. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, with diversity and also just the fact that as an engineer at heart, learning to love how different things work, um, I found that there's such a such a difference in scalping versus swing trades that I've, I'm I'm fascinated with what that is and why and, and and how to better understand it so I can be more successful with it. Mm-hmm. And if I'm correctly seeing, you have a lot of different volumes opening in your trade. That is because you have said uh, that you said uh, you have the application for calculation your risk? Yes. Um, I, I think uh, you probably see a lot of... Um, a lot of lot sizes in the 0.2 yep. to 0.4 range. Yep, yep. Um, and that's because if I'm going in to risk, usually the stop loss distance is about the same. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not a specific pip range, but usually it's about the same. And if I'm putting in say three or four take profits, that division of the total lot size ends up mm-hmm. being coincidentally in the 0.2 to 0.4 range. Mm-hmm. And you are risking no more than 1% and half. Usually, I'm aiming for one percent uh-huh. per uh, per symbol. Per yep. symbol. Yep. No more. Sometimes and less. How, and how, mm-hmm. how about the risk reward? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. Uh-huh. That's so actually not something look. I focus on because okay. I'm, I'm more focused on the total risk outlay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's see. take a look. Okay, I can see three. That's really good. <laughs> Well, and the win rate seventy one, maybe That's it wouldn't also be good. really good. <laughs> win rate seventy one and risk reward ratio free. It's really good. Yeah. Well, uh, last month, last month was definitely, I think, one of my better months. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say that that's not my average, but I'm happy to have that as a mm-hmm. target and and aim for that. You know, every month. <laughs> and do you have some limits uh, of how many trades you can open per day? Uh, no. Nope. nope. It, it all comes down to my, my risk outlay and, and diverse and then my own kind of system, not, not a, a defined system, mm-hmm. but um, the di- diversity around symbols. You know, I don't I don't want to have a bunch of uh, euro pairs, mm-hmm. for instance, because all it takes is, you know, one one bad news event for euro and then I'm headed towards my stop losses or or maybe take profits. But mm-hmm. I, I'd rather mitigate that that risk than than try and lean mm-hmm. in for profit. And how do you work on your psychology during the trading? Uh, so the, um, one one book that I found really really mm-hmm. useful, um, no nonsense forex uh, forex trading psychology. Uh, I thought was really really good. Um, I mean it, it's it's a it's a very a very hard look and very black and white um, look at you know, at a trader's psychology, mm-hmm. and it, it defines um, having a system, having a proven system, and then remove not only the emotion but also remove the thinking. 
um, uh, when it comes to trading. So certainly you have you have to evaluate things. You know, it's not like the system is an EA, but mm -hmm. the system um, can be a set of indicators like I use with Jesse's XK system. And you have certain things that you look for. And when everything lines up, you take your trade, you set mm -hmm. your stop loss, you set your take profits. And mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily set and forget mm -hmm. because part of the system is to reevaluate. But you're not saying, oh, my gosh, I've got this huge movement because of a news event and you overreact. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, certainly it's fine if you're taking profit and you're and you're you're reacting, but uh, but not to take losses because you're emotionally attached to it. And then revenge trading, of course, you don't want to go there. But I thought that book was really great about removing the emotion from mm -hmm. from trading. And by reevaluation, you mean backtesting or changing the system in itself? Just just reevaluating an existing trade, for instance. Um, okay. Certainly, the system should be open to be to 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 change, mm -hmm. um, and that's that, that's certainly the case. But mostly, what I was referring to is I'm in an open trade. I've got my take profits. I've got my uh, my stop loss. And if I see uh, something has changed within the indicators, that suggests maybe uh, the the length of the swing trade may be shortened, mm -hmm. uh, or perhaps maybe we need to extend it out, then then those are some things that might happen. And how about the backtesting? Um, haven't really done a ton of backtesting outside okay. of just inside of EA development. Um, so I uh, haven't really done much on, in that regard. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you very much for this overview. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of very simple and I really like it. So let's get going to another part. Okay, Dylan, so... Let's talk about your future and your uh, future in the trading career. Uh, where do you see yourself in like five years period? Well, uh, five years. Um, so, I mean, I would love to, to still be trading FTMO. Um, I'd love to still be uh, trading Forex. Um, like I said, it's it's not a, a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a full-time job in five years. I don't know because um, I, I try to I try to not set uh, my future mm -hmm. <laughs> without. Uh, a, a, an opportunity to um, uh, to to change that as things uh, as things come up, but um, yeah, I, in, in five years, uh, I've got uh, my my uh, consulting business mm -hmm. that um, I hope is is doing not only just quite well, but also gives uh, my wife and I some flexibility to um, to continue traveling and um, and enjoying our lives together, as opposed to uh, the grind of nine to five. And again. Don't like sitting in front of the computer all day long. I've done I've done uh, plenty of time in front of the computer. So, where do flexibility you want to, in life. And where do you want to travel? Uh, let's see, Prague would be great. Um, cool. You know, maybe some uh, some in Europe. I've got uh, uh, ancestors in um, in Holland, so okay. you know, getting out to to up to there. I love Scotch. Uh, yes. You know, whiskey, Scotch. Yep, yep. yep. Um, and I've been to Scotland. Um, would love to get back there. Um, my wife. Um, is uh, from South America. There's Central America, I, everywhere, okay. all the places. Nice, nice. <laughs> That's weird. And do you have some guidance to our traders? Uh, yes. Um, master risk management and master your emotions. I mean, without those things, all the technical training and all of the fundamental training um, doesn't really mean a whole lot. It, mm -hmm. it won't amount to a whole lot. If you don't have emotional control and if you don't have risk management in place, then you're relying on luck and that's <laughs> not going to get you very far. Cool. Thank you for this. And what did you say to others about FTMO? Uh, uh, look, if I had my own $100,000 just sitting in a bank that I could take out and trade, why would I do that if I can use someone else's money? And when you have the system in place that forces you uh, to have the risk management, and I mean, it's a it, it's a it's a fantastic opportunity, um, and I can say obviously with with confidence that um, FTMO is a, a stand up a stand up company. Um, you know, I've been been getting profit splits every month since October of last year. Um, it's been it's been great trading with FTMO, and I've I've spoken nothing but great things about about your company and the opportunity to anybody that's asked or that will listen. Great, great. Thank you a lot for those words. Absolutely. All right, Dylan. So this was very good to meet you. I'm very happy so that I could know you. Uh, I gained a lot of knowledge. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I gained a lot of knowledge from you and other might too. 
So thank you so much for from my side and I believe from others. And also thank you for those trading insights. Very helpful. And I'd like to also like to point out that it is amazing how you can steadily grow without being greedy. So the greediness is always the very tough fight to, to have. So very nice to see you that you can handle it. And I have also one special advice for you. The market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. So stick to your rules and prosper, prosper as much as possible. And do you have some last words? Um. Well, thanks to FTMO for the opportunity again, obviously. Uh, thanks to Jesse and his XK system for, for giving me the tools to even have this opportunity um, and, and knowing that as a, as a relatively new trader, even uh, in October of last year, didn't even have a year under my belt <clears throat> to be able to go through um, FTMO's uh, verification system and, and have that, that kind of capital to trade has been great. So um, thanks to you. Thanks to Jesse. And, uh, and thanks to my wife for, uh, for being patient with me. And that's FDMO.